there, stamping friends. Jackie Ball Heights from Clump and Stampers. Today, I'm gonna make some note cards for you. Now, I make a lot of note cards. They're kind of my favorite card base, I guess I'd like to call it, simply because you can purchase a pack of 20 of them and you've got the base and the envelope and you're all ready to create. Now, sometimes I stamp right on the note card itself and other times I layer on it. Well, today we're gonna layer and we're gonna use a new stamp set called Welcoming Woods. I always have to look. I can't remember all of these names anymore, these stamp sets, but it's the perfect stamp set for just all occasion note cards for anybody, especially men. So that means we're going to call these masculine ones because they're the hardest to make cards for. Now we're also going to do a little bit of watercolor background and then the stamping simple and we're going to use the Stamparatus. Now I love the Stamparatus. Do you have one? Do you use it? Now I'll admit I don't use it all the time, but there's two times I pull it out like almost all the time. One is if I'm making a bunch of cards. And in this case, I wanted to make up several sets of these cards so that I could give them to people as a gift. Just the set of cards, give them as a gift that they can use them. So if I'm doing a lot of the same thing, the Stamparatus is perfect for that. The other time I like to use it is for larger stamps. Now this one is, it's fairly big. I wouldn't call it as big as a background, but it's a pretty good size stamp. That way, one, you don't need all those big blocks, but two, it's just sometimes easier on big stamps to be able to get them straight, get good even pressure. It's perfect for those larger stamps. We're about ready to get stamping. But real quickly, thank you for tuning in. If you're brand new and you follow or found my video for the first time, welcome. I hope you learned some stamping tips and you check out my website. I love to teach quick and easy card making, especially for those of you that are brand new to stamping. I try to make it not so overwhelming with so much stuff. We can make beautiful cards that are quick and easy. So make sure to check out my website and always there's a link down in the video description that will take you to a specific blog post over there on the website that will have pictures of the cards I make today along with all the details. I give you the list of supplies, the cutting measurements and everything. So if you'd like to make these cards, you can just copy them with the, the details that I have there. There'll also be a link for you to order Stampin' Up! products. If you don't have these products and would like them, I appreciate it and I thank you in advance for picking me to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator to place your orders from. It's those of you that order from me help me be able to bring you card making videos usually twice a week. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And make sure you check out my frequent shopper rewards. I love to give free stamp sets to my, my frequent shopper customers. So, And I always have special tutorials for those of you that are my stampers. So check that all out over there, get a hold of me and ask and I'll be happy to, to share all of that with you. But I don't wanna talk anymore. I wanna to get to stamping and show you these fun note cards. Hang on, let's flip the camera. So we have quite a bit to share today. Lots of little tips, not only for making the cards I'm gonna make, but for the Stamparatus, watercoloring, and all kinds of things. So hang in there with me till the end because you never know what you're gonna learn. Now, I wanna just point out the Stamparatus because it's on page 144 of the annual catalog, and I feel like this page just doesn't do it justice. The Stamparatus is a stamp positioning tool that you can use it with all of your stamps, but like I said, Background stamps and repetitive stamping or anything large is my favorite to use it with. Now, on here, I do have the Deluxe Foam Mat. And that's an add-on that you can purchase. It's shown right here. You know, the, the Stamparatus itself has a grid on it. And then it comes with a black foam mat because whenever you're using the clear photopolymer stamps, you need to get a little bit more thickness in there. So it does have a foam mat or you can purchase this add-on, it's only $6, and that is actually black foam with the grid on it. So if you like having that grid, and I also feel it's just a little bit more solid, so to speak, in there, but we need to add this when we're using these clear stamps to just get a little bit more thickness. And then you can also purchase the grid paper, and you see me use this on my videos as just my scrap paper, but it's actually designed for the size to fit our Stamparatus. And you'll see how I use this here in a second. Okay, Welcoming Woods. This is the stamp set we're using. And like I said, it's great for masculine cards or anybody, but those masculine ones are tough. So whenever I find a stamp set good for them, I'm all over it. But I like that we have hello, thank you, birthday, good luck, best wishes, celebrate. So a lot of good greetings in here. Now we're going to open this up 
and you'll see here is that tree stamp, birch tree trunks, and it's pretty big. So right away when I looked at the stamp, it's like, yep, this one's for the Stamparatus. Now let's, I want to move that ink pad because I'm going to have a mess here. I want to make sure the Stamparatus is in, in the video view here. So a couple of tricks for the card I'm making. It, I never like to put, like, I have this pre-cut. Oh, sorry, I'm talking in circles here. Um, I don't like to put it right up tight in the corner here because if you put your stamp way up tight there, sometimes it's really difficult to stamp right along those edges. So I like to move it out, you know, as far as I can to be able to get, you know, just nice, easy room. And this is where I like to use that grid paper. I am going to actually line this up on this corner you can see the dark line there and the dark line there now it doesn't matter what dark lines you use it's just kind of or dotted lines for that matter it's just kind of you knowing where you're placing it now it does come with magnets so you could put a magnet on here if you wanted to but honestly i don't always do that um I tend to just go ahead and know where I place it, and that way I can place it for multiples. Now, actually, we're going to flip this around because this first card I want to show you, we're going to go the long way here. So my stamp is clean, so I can lay this down on here and figure out exactly where I want to place it. Now, this is where I need to remember where that cardstock is. But with the stamp, I want to make sure that the top of the trees are all running off the top and the bottom are running off the bottom. So I can see here, yep, that is perfect placement. So then I can go ahead, close this up and pick it up. Now you'll notice that that's stuck. That is why you got to remember where it was. And if you forget, you can even, before you close that and stamp it all the way, you can kind of see below, you know, through it, in my where I want it to be. And that looks good. So let's just leave it sit there. And we're going to use the gray granite stamp pad. And I will gently ink it up like so. And then we can go ahead and close it and just give it some good pressure. And this is where, if you're out more in the middle instead of on these edges, it's just a whole lot easier to get some good pressure on there. And we can peel it off and there we go look at how pretty that stamps love this image now let's go ahead and just set that one aside and i'm going to take another piece now these pieces what are they four and a half by three again i'll have all the measurements over on my website for you so that you'll be able to recreate these cards let's just set that aside Actually, let's use our scrap paper here. And I want to, on this one, do a little bit of a background watercoloring before we stamp on it. Now, there's bazillions of different ways to do this. What I have found I like to do the best is I just take a clear block and I actually ink it up on my pad. Picked up some ink there. And then I have the watercolor or the water painter here. And you'll notice it says push on the two sides. So if you just give that a little gentle push there, get that water flowing. And I can kind of tap and I can see water's coming out. So I'll kind of mix it with some of that ink there. Now I am using basic white. This is not really designed to take a lot of water. You know, if you're gonna do a lot of water coloring, you want either the shimmery white or the watercolor paper but i found for this i'm doing so very little that it doesn't matter that i just um use this basic white and all i'm doing is just real light handedly here just doing a little bit of scribbling down here on the bottom there you go you can't move the color around um, that might even be a little bit dark for what i want to do you know what let's grab another piece here um, like I said, you can't move the color around, so it can get dark real easy. So to prevent that, you want to make sure your, your ink over here is really watered down. Okay, so it's nice and light. Okay, we can see how it's much lighter there. That's what I want. So let's just do real light hand. And notice part of the key here is just a real light hand. Um, I, I like to say kind of a floppy wrist here just to add some color. No rhyme nor reason, okay? We don't want it colored solid. We just kind of want those little brush strokes. That's much better. See the difference? This one I did not like at all. So much happier with this one. Now, it just takes a second to dry because I have it so watered down. 
So now we can go ahead and bring our Stamparatus in. Now I have two options. I could clean that stamp because I need different placement. We're gonna put the trees going up and down. So I need to use a different spot here. So what I'm gonna do, just because I don't like to clean my stamps, I'm gonna kind of guess. And you can see here that is completely off. So what I'm gonna do is kind of move it over, being careful to not set this down. And I think it's gonna be about right, right here. Let's see what that, we can just kind of set it there. Now I'm looking through, my goal here is I'm gonna show the bottom of the trees, but I don't wanna show the top. Yeah, you know, I want those tops to run off. So let's move that down even further. And we'll go up just a hair. You know, it probably would have been quicker and easier to, to wash it, but if you don't want to, you can see here. Okay, it looks like we're almost in the clear. Let's move it down just a hair. That looks good. Off the top, bottoms on, leave our paper there. And we can go ahead and ink this up. And I just kind of wanted to show you this card. I'm gonna make two different designs here, but we've got it going in two different directions. So there you go. Now you can see the trees are running off the top because I have that watercolor wash down here to kind of make it look like the ground. And then this one just covers the whole thing. So let's stick that out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and make a greeting for on this. Let's do this one first. So I'm gonna just take my black and I have a piece of balmy blue, which is the same color that we use for that watercolor wash. And this time we're gonna do celebrate. And then we go this way. Now, most of the time when I am doing a greeting and I want it cut out, I will stamp on a piece of scrap paper first. And then I grab my trimmer and I will just cut it down. So I stamped right along the edge. So all I need to do now is cut along the top and then I can flip it around this way and cut and flip it around this way and we'll have some nice cuts here. You could do this with your scissors as well. Um, I like to use my cutter so they're nice and straight. But you'll notice a lot of times when you see recipes or card measurements that I share on my blog, I don't give measurements for the greetings. And this is because I let, I think it's easier and I try to teach you to do it this way. Um, then you just get that stamp nice and centered in there instead of pre-cutting it. Okay, let's grab a piece of the balmy blue to back this with and we'll use some of our liquid adhesive here. Gotta pull the kind of goopy end off of it. And we will layer that on here like so. Now, we probably should have stamped before we layered, but I'm gonna just take some of these snowflakes. Um, this is one of the stamps that are in the stamp set. And you wanna be careful to not put too many. When I was first playing around with this, I probably stamped it five or six times and it was just way too many. Let's just get one up in the top there. And it just looked like overpowering. So we only stamped it three times with the addition of the one extra little one on there. And I think it looks better. Um, so often we tend to overdo things. I always say less is better. So remember you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So I had quite a few of these in the trash can as I was first playing with it. Okay. There is our little word that says celebrate. And we're gonna just stick this down at the bottom there. And then, like I said, we're using note cards and envelopes. That way we have the note card, it has an envelope with it. And we'll just go ahead and add our panel to it. And there we go. Look at how easy that was. And I thought it just made a really nice winter themed card. Doesn't have to be a Christmas card. You know, winter, we have a long winter, especially here in Michigan. So in the winter, even birthday cards or whatever, I like to kind of theme them with more of that winter look. Now, let me grab the other cards I made um, and show you what I did. So this piece, rather than finishing it for you, I wanna show you these two. So I did one with Cajun Craze and then one with the Balmy Blue. So you can see I added the snowflakes and then I added 
the leaves. There's a leaf stamp as well. Now this one, again, I think I only stamped it twice. Don't overdo it. I really struggled. I've a lot my trash can, um, but it looked much cleaner and crisper with just a few on there. And then I tried to use lots of the different words that come in this stamp set. So we have happy birthday. Thank you. Here is our good luck one, which is what we just did with the celebrate. And then also here is hello friend. So super versatile stamp set. You can make masculine cards or these would be perfect for anybody. So I hope you like the tips I shared with you today. Again, with that watercolor wash, remember you can't go over it a lot. That paper's not designed to take water, but if you just kind of real lightly put some on, make sure it's watered down so it's not too dark like that first one I made. I'm still looking at this one going, that's really ugly. <laughs> And um, so I hope you like those tips. And again, if you'd like all the details, measurements, and supplies I used, link is down in the video description to take you to my website. And over there, you'll find all of that. If you have any questions, please get a hold of me. I would love to help you and um, share any way that I can to help you learn and have fun making quick and easy cards. So I'll stamp with you again real soon. Have a stamp happy day.